This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. If the posterior plate does not crack, how do we proceed? Let's discuss this issue in this video. She is an 80-year-old lady who has this dense brown cataract. Along with that, point to note here is the presence of a dense arcus, which is also relatively wider. I have observed that in these patients, some of the attachment of the desmus membrane with the stroma is uh, not so great, and these eyes could be vulnerable for desmus membrane detachment, especially in the incision areas. So one needs to be mindful of this. So nevertheless, coming to the problem at hand now, as is my routine nowadays, I'm preferring the classical divide and conquer four quadrant technique in such density cataracts. And according to the plan, the rexis is done. I'm just doing sculpting now. So at the cost of reputation, I would like to stress that the nucleus can be sculpted best when we support it with the second instrument using a chopper or a sense cube. That's what I'm doing now. The tip is exposed slightly longer than usual and the trenching is continued. The nucleus is rotated and progressively the trenches are being deepened. So I'll just play the video in a faster mode so that we reach the point where the difficulty actually begins. So what I'm doing now is just progressively trenching and deepening the groove. So at this point, still see the horizontal striations across. And now I'm going to do the last groove, that is the fourth groove in the plus sign. So this is going to be the deepest groove on the first attempt itself because other grooves have already been made. At this point, uh, we can notice that the central part is still thick enough. So again, the trenching is continued in the other part. I'm going to continue the trenching until there is a change in the color of the posterior plate or a presumed posterior plate. So at this point, the peripheral parts of the trenches, the color has changed to a more darker shade and the horizontal striations of the lens fibers are visible but less in intensity. Again, it, the nucleus is rotated and continued. Point to note here is the peripheral part of all the trenches has become much more thinner but on the contrary the central plate is still quite thick and this has escaped my attention. So I am looking at this peripheral portions and I thought that the grooving is deep enough but I ignored the central part. The central part is still not deep enough but it has escaped my attention at that moment. So I just proceed to do the lateral separation now and without realizing that the central posterior plate is still not shaved deep enough. And as expected, there is only a, a separation of the posterior plate in the peripheral part, but in the central part, I am unable to proceed. I rotate the nucleus and trying to do the same lateral separation maneuvers. The result is the same. The peripheral part just breaks up, whereas the central part, the attachment continues to be there. At this moment, I also realize that the iris is coming out through the side port simply because the irrigation sleeve is at below the pupillary level and the fluid which is coming out has an effect on the iris and the pupil is pushed out. So at this point, when the third fragment is also difficult to crack, I realize my error in judgment. The posterior plate in the central part is not shaved enough. So I go in and try to deepen it still. But still the central point is not separating at all. It is too leathery. At this point, I thought the best thing is to come out, reassess the situation. The pupil is coming down. So I have asked to give me BSS which has a diluted adrenaline so that the pupil can be dilated a little bit. This is the time wherein I am going to utilize this for organizing my thoughts a bit. At this point, it's important to realize that we don't have to panic and do anything silly. So once I realize what the problem is, that is the central attachment, so that is going to be very difficult to break now. So find a way to circumvent it. The first thing I do is try to bring one fragment out of the bag and then try to forcefully do the separation of this root from the central point. 
And once we have enough space in the bag, managing the remaining three pieces is going to be relatively easy. Corn is again coated with the OVD and the BSS which is connected to the FACO machine also has been put in adrenaline so that the mid reassess will be maintained. So time to go in with the FACO probe again. So the lateral separation maneuvers are, are continued. My goal is to at least extract one piece out now. So I'm just trying to do the lateral separation maneuver as gentle as possible. And again, the central posterior plate is the one which is refusing to give way. I'm just trying to rotate the nucleus and see if there is one free fragment. If I can get one fragment out, it would definitely ease my job. So these last two fragments on my left hand side seem to be having the least attachment to the central posterior plate. So I thought I'll pull one of them out of the back and uh, try to emulsify. So I'm just trying to choose the one which is slightly at an upper plane because it has got lesser resistance to be pulled out of the bag. So I pull it out of the bag and there is a small pedicle which is attached at the base but that pedicle is so small that I can uh, uh, maneuver the nucleus out with it still attaching and then I can fake this one fragment out. Again, the second part of the same fragment is then emulsified. The pedicle of attachment is cut off and it is still hanging there adjacent to the posterior plate. So let it be there. It's not going to be much of an issue. Now going in with the second fragment, this fragment I'm going to divide this into two pieces and even a wide lateral separation maneuver is not going to separate the posterior plate attachment. In this fragment, I'm trying to chop it going underneath it trying to chop it at it, the attached pedicle itself. I'm reasonably successful in freeing up this fragment. This fragment is then eventually consumed. So time to refill the OVD again. We can see the posterior plate pedicle still, which have been cut off from the fragments which are removed. Now to deal with the attachment of the last two fragments at this point wherein half of the bag is empty this is an ideal situation to use the my technique of fakoing the base so just lift up the fragments so that the posterior plate comes more anterior and we are far away from the posterior capsule nudging the top part of the nucleus brings the posterior plate towards the anterior aspect so that we have access to fake the attachment the setting is changed to the sculpt mode which has got very low flow rate and vacuum so we are unlikely to damage anything. Using the sculpt mode I am just going to emulsify this bridge which is holding on these two pieces. These two pieces are free now and it's easier for us to consume them individually. Again using direct torsional energy we are going to consume them. So this is going to be the routine stuff. The so last fragment is then emulsified. That's it, the lens is placed into the bag and the case is done. To summarize, I think what we learned in this case was the posterior plate did not crack in the first instance simply because the central part of the trenching was not deep enough whereas the peripheral part of the trenches in the 4 plus signs was alright. So while dividing the peripheral part gave way but the central 2 mm or 3 mm zone did not give way and all these four quadrants they were attached to the central plate and that was a difficulty in laterally separating them. So the solution would be just to be much more deeper in the central plane and as we could see there was no significant color change in the central portion as compared to the peripheral part. This was a telling sign that the depth in the central portion was not good enough. A little bit of a keen eye would have helped us to identify this issue. But nevertheless, when you're caught up in such a situation, always redo the sculpting the center part a little bit more, even though it might not give way totally. Somehow manage to get one fragment out of the bag and take it out. Once the space is created, it's much more easier to deal with the subsequent parts. And lastly but not the least, when one fragment is out and we have got enough space, we can always flip the fragments so that the posterior plate is moved anteriorly so that we have access to the posterior plate which can be fake code under direct visualization. And by fake going at this bridge of attachment, it's fake going at the base, we are very effortlessly breaking the posterior plate. And this would be the safest 
way to you know break this attachments however this can be done only when at least one fragment of the nucleus has been eaten off so that we have enough space to maneuver the nucleus around so that the base of the nucleus can be projected anteriorly so that was it hope you found this helpful thank you for watching